This levitating light bulb gadget is amazing as it both levitates and it lights up. But how can we use some physics to understand what's going on? To get it to levitate without being pulled down, you have to get it right in the centre of the base. So let's use a magna probe to see what's going on with the magnetism. So the base of the light bulb is attracting the north pole of the other magnet, so it has a south pole. The centre of the base does exactly the same thing, so it also has a south pole. Slightly further out towards the corners of the base, the south pole of the other magnet is attracted in four places. You can see it gets pulled down towards it, and that tells us that there are four north poles surrounding it. So the basic reason that it levitates is because you've got a south pole in the bulb and a south pole in the base, which repel each other. But normally it would fly off in one direction because this would be unstable. But because of the four north poles that are in the four corners of the base, they're electromagnets whose strength can be adjusted and that can keep it balanced. So we've explained how it levitates, but how does it light up? To investigate this, I've put a coil of copper wire on the base. It's about 20 tons of enameled copper wire, and I've connected that to a USB oscilloscope, which makes my computer an oscilloscope. Let's see what happens on the oscilloscope when we turn on the light part. You can see that we're getting an induced AC EMF or AC potential deference, and if we turn the light part off, then that disappears again. It's clear that there must be a coil in the base and a coil in the lamp working as a kind of transformer. If we look at this enlarged trace, we can see that the time period is a bit over 5 microseconds, which means the frequency is going to be a little under 200 kilohertz. And this is typical of wireless charging. Now that we've understood both how it levitates and how it lights up, let's just enjoy its mesmerising appearance for a little bit longer.